Yeah, man, because we, we, we here. Me and Dr. B are here. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So he's like, stand up. And I'm like, oh my God. My first initial, I, my first initial instinct was to twerk. But I don't want to twerk in front of my doctor. So when he left, I twerked immediately. My mom judged me. I don't care. I couldn't. back in. I am Shanae. This is Shanae's Law. And we are currently in the middle of my reconstructive foot surgery series here on the channel. So if you're watching this, this means that you hopefully see parts one and part two and that you're aware of what's going on. So this one, we're going to talk about the aftermath. This is part three. So, you know, at this point, I had my surgery on March 9th. I am um, past eight weeks post-op you know and i'm just getting annoyed i'm getting frustrated now i can't walk i have not bear weight on my foot in over eight weeks and i am just at my wits end at this point because you need your feet you don't know how thankful you are to even have feet and it's just like it was just a lot you know i i couldn't work i was on medical leave i was in short-term disability and short-term disability only pays 60% of what you normally make. So if you don't make a lot anyway, and then you only get 60% of that, oh, forget about it. I'm very blessed that I had some savings. I'm so blessed that I had savings, which is why it's so important that everybody has savings. And we got a, we got a video about that on the channel. I, you know, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I'm not just talking out of the side of my neck. This is why you need to have money saved, because you never know when something like this happens and you need some money. You know, where's it going to come from? You know, I don't have a rich aunt or uncle or parents that got dough. Everything that I ever got, I got for myself. You know what I mean? I'm a self-made individual. So I'm blessed that I had some savings because that definitely helped me out. And I remember I was trying to get food stamps for the longest, you know, to supplement my income. And they kept trying to tell me, oh, as long as you got over 3000 in your savings, we can't help. And I'm thinking, what you mean? I'm a homeowner. $3,000 is nothing. I'm like... I'm in the danger zone as far as savings go. You're supposed to have way more than that in your savings, ideally. I mean, that's not even enough money to really cover three months of bills. What do you mean? But, you know, I just find sometimes people don't care with you. So at this point, money's getting low. My faith is just... I was a little sad. I really wasn't depressed because although my body was down and out, I had a spiritual enlightenment and I was just reading. I was reading about my ancestry. I was reading about GMOs. I was reading about different foods. And I started making conscious decisions about I need to give up milk. I need to give up dairy. I just started, you know, thinking of all these things that could help my healing. And, you know, I just start focusing on other things. I want to think about all the things that made me happy in childhood, which I was already trying to think about those things prior to the surgery, but I had time to sit down. And you know, I'm a person, I'm always on a go. Boom, 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 boom. So with this surgery, I just kind of realized, you know, you needed this moment. It wasn't the ideal vacation, if you will, but you needed this moment. You needed this moment to sit down, reevaluate your life, because here you are. Young and having foot surgery because you were trying to get money. Because you out here trying to get the bag at a job that really didn't care that you were human. You know? And I just evaluated a lot of things. And I just start putting things into perspective. Because I, I can't go on my life like this. I still have to get the other fit, foot done. This one is not... This one is not even really healing well. And I just took that time out for me. I took that time out to really explore what it is that I wanted. And I think that's what helped keep me, that's what helped keep me sane. Because, I mean, I was getting, <laughs> I was, what they call it? I was getting cabin fever. I was definitely getting cabin fever. I couldn't go nowhere. Sure, you can go out and do things on your knee scooter, but who wants to? This world is not safe. I don't want to be out there on the knee scooter taking life chances. I want to be somewhere safe. And the safest place for me was home. Safest place for me was home, which is why I stayed in the house so much. I only went out when I had to. You know what I mean? I just only went out when I had to. I stayed in the house. I went to the doctor. I kept up with my appointments. 
And that was pretty much it. I was not out in them streets like that. So I went back for my next appointment. And this is when things got real. He was like, you know what? This ain't healing and this isn't normal. I'm going to see if I can get you a bone healing system. I'm going to make sure your insurance can approve it. But we've got to do something. I'm getting concerned. So he put that order in. And I just kept trying to stay calm and maintain and, stay, and think positive. You know, law of attraction is real. I wanted to stay positive. I don't want to be down and out thinking, oh, it's over. And, you know, I'm so blessed and lucky that I had help. My mother and my brother took really, really good care of me. They brought my meals. They took out the dishes. They cleaned my bathroom for me every week. They helped dust my room for me. I, I, they made sure that I was hydrated, that I had my tea. They made me comfortable. They would prop up my pillows and my blanket to keep my leg elevated. My little brother was like the ice man. He kept that dad on leg iced and elevated for weeks. I remember after week six or week eight, the doctor was like, you don't have to ice as much. Uh, but I, I still continued to ice until I could walk. Okay, between me and you, I kept icing. And I needed to. And I mean, so... I, I kept doing that. I elevated a little bit, but at this point, I'm like, I gotta keep it moving. I'm, you know, I'm probably gaining weight. I'm losing muscle. I started taking my free weights, and I was doing exercises with them. I was doing donkey kicks. I was doing leg lifts. I was working out as much as I could without pressing down on my foot. I was not about to just go down without a fight. So, by the time May 2nd came, mind you, we started March 9th. It's now May 2nd. I went in. There's a salesman there. I seen the guy behind the desk when I rolled in, but I didn't really pay him no mind. So the nurse, we do the usual. We get the x-ray and we go in the room and then she tells me and then my doctor came in. Dr. B came in and he said, hey, you know, this guy is from, you know, he's from the BioVentures group, this, that, and the third. And he, this is the bone healing system that I was telling you about. So ultrasound system that's supposed to help stimulate bone healing and bone growth. This is what we talked about. So I'm going to let you guys talk and get acquainted and work out. And if you decide to, um, to get it today, which I, I absolutely think you should, but y'all can work out a payment plan if necessary. So then God stepped in and I got this. This right here. Well, let me tell you about it first before I, I tell y'all about my baby daddy. So this is May 2nd. I speak to the salesman. I think his name was Bart. I spoke to him. We talked it over. He demonstrated how it works, how I put it on, how long to have it on. You wear it for 20 minutes, ideally every day for 20 minutes, the same time every day because it has a little calendar on the grid. I'm actually going to do a review about this too. So for those of you who are having delayed bone healing, I absolutely recommend that you get this. And then another video, I'll go into why you should and what it did for me. But May 2nd, I actually went ahead. I worked it out with Bart. I think that was his name. If not, I'm sorry. We'll just call him Bart for the video. So we worked it out. We talked it out. He told me after insurance payments, I uh, ideally, that I would only have to pay, I think he said like 175 ish maybe. I'll put those totals in the video too because I have all my paperwork. I just can't remember. But I do know I paid a certain amount for three months. So the good thing about the payment plan was I was paying what I my out of pocket would be once the insurance paid. So we broke it down and I could have put it on my credit card. But mind you, my money's low. I'm trying to be smart. So I was like, yeah, let's do three payments. And so he went on and gave it to me. said, cool, they're going to bill you next month. So in June will be your first payment. Like, all right, because, you know, I should be getting my life together. So we worked it out. Came home and I, I used it right away. I charged it up. I remember what he said. I looked at my instructions and I took the little gel and put it on the foot because it's, it's like ultrasound. It looked like what they put on pregnant women. And I put the little thing on and then I felt like a warming sensation. So for me, you know, I had already talked to him about it. I talked to him, Dr. B about it. I was using it twice a day. Okay. And I could kind of feel things going on, but I wasn't sure. So in the meantime, in the between time, between my next appointment, I just kept trying to work out when I could. I kept staying busy. I was looking for jobs online because my doctor already told me, I don't want you back there. I need you at a desk job because I got to fix this left foot. I don't want to destroy what I did with the right foot. And I, I just need you to sit down somewhere. So I'm looking for jobs. I'm just trying to keep myself up. Anything that I can take care of, I'm making sure that I'm taking care of it. You understand? So... Ah, came back. 
it was almost fixed my, on, during my next appointment. That was still like a small space, a very small space of bone healing that wasn't where my doctor felt it should be. You can still see like a little space next to the pen in the foot. So he's like, uh, almost there, almost. You know, mind you, I had already had my boot. They gave me my boot during, at my six week post-op appointment. So I already had my surgical boot and I already had the sponges that went to it. So I'm bringing the boot every appointment in hopes that this will be the day. This is going to be a big day that I press down on, on God's green earth again. And it normally it wasn't that day, but I had the boot and he was like, we're close. We're getting there, but not yet. I'm going to give it two more weeks and then I'm going to let you start walking. I'm like, oh my God, please, please, please. So I went back May 30th, 2018. And I really wasn't, mind you, my birthday's June 3rd. So I was like, God, please. I want to walk for my birthday. It's been like three months. It's been almost three months, God. Please let me walk. So I went in May 30th. I've been using this bone healing system for four weeks now. And I've been using it twice a day. Been using it twice a day. And I was even like standing up on the hill in my boot at home a little bit. Not too much, but I was just standing up on the hill. Just trying to stand up because I'm telling you, you get body aches and pains. My knee was hurting because I was on it. Mind you, three months I was on that knee on that scooter so my little knee is turning black it, i was so uncomfortable i couldn't sleep at night it was just hard it was so hard I, my body was just getting tired of not being mobile it was awful so this day had led everything that you've done has led up to may 30th of 2018 i'm going i i know the routine i get the x-rays i'm sitting in there i'm waiting on dr b he's like yeah yeah, I already know what yeah meant because we, we, we're here. Me and Dr. B are here. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So he's like, stand up. And I'm like, oh my God. My first initial, I my first initial instinct was to twerk. But I don't want to twerk in front of my doctor. So when he left, I twerked immediately. My mom judged me. I don't care. I couldn't dance for so long. You hear, I'm over here. I can't do the, the childish gamble, this is America. Don't let them trip and do I couldn't do that dance. I couldn't do the J-Boy B block. I couldn't do none of that because my right foot was down and out. I couldn't do none of the ladies dance moves. I couldn't do none of them dance moves at Beachella. She got there getting it. I can't dance along. It was bad. Mind you, Cardi's album dropped while I was recovering from foot surgery. I couldn't dance to none of that. So, I made, oh, I made up for it. What I could do. But, you know, so... They come in, the nurse comes back in, I have my boot, we put the boot on, they put a cushion on inside of the boot, you know, to give me like, I guess, extra comfort. So I have that in, and then I had to get an, another, like a shoe balancer, and I'll give you guys a picture of that too. I had to put that on my left foot because they wanted to keep me balanced, they wanted to keep both feet balanced while I walked, so I wasn't hopping around on the right one, on the right foot, that is. And because that could have caused friction with my hips and I didn't need no more problems. So I got the apparatus that was going to allow my left foot to be the same height as my right foot while I wore my surgical boot. And that worked out perfectly. So he said, I'm going to see you again in two weeks. Keep the boot on. Take it off when necessary. Don't go crazy. You know, don't be running around when you start hurting. Listen to your body. Sit down when necessary. So I needed his words. I sat down when necessary, but I was so happy. <laughs> I updated all my social media pictures. I had my little dare shirt on. I was so happy. Y'all don't understand. That was the biggest blessing ever. And then my birthday was coming up. So I was going to be walking for my birthday. It's great. So uh, all of that happened. I was cleaning up here and there. I was doing what I could. You know, I didn't want to go too crazy. But, you know, I came back. The, the uh, I think it was like a week after my birthday and everything was still good he said everything was still healing you know I definitely want you to just take it easy you know because it's still not the way I want it it's still not perfect so you can't work out yet you can try to do things here and there but you can't work out so at this point you know I'm doing crunches I'm doing you know I'm doing aerobics here and there but nothing crazy I can't do Zumba yet I'm not going to do Zumba but I can't walk and I'm, I'm going to take what I can I'm going to take what I can you know, I'm just thankful that I can stand up on both feet at this point. So the next appointment was good. 
He still wants me to take it easy because it's not completely solid, but it's solid enough to walk on. And I am, you know, taking it easy. I'm just basically do what your doctor says, okay? Don't be out here going crazy. Don't be running. Don't be jumping. I didn't do any of that. I played it cool. I was just thankful I could walk. I was going out in public. I was getting fresh air now, but I definitely kept that boot on. I didn't take that boot on uh, off unless I was sleeping or resting, bathing, you know, I definitely kept it on when necessary. I didn't want to be out here ruining any of the work that we had done. There was a lot of work on one foot, so next appointment, everything's good. I'm checking out. I'm still eating. I'm still taking my magnesium, my calcium, and my zinc supplements. I'm just, you know, just trying to do whatever I can to make sure that I'm a part of this healing system. And, you know, I finished my vision board. I was drawing. I just got really creative and I just tried to really embrace being off of work, being at home, healing, just stay calm. I just really, the whole time, I just tried to stay calm because stress can really mess with your body and mess with your healing. So I did that and I remember, set, uh, excuse me, July 11th. You see how long this process is? July 11th. I came back, excuse me, before July 11th. I had an appointment two weeks prior to that, the end of, uh, I think the last week of June. And he was like, you know what? Let's try a shoe. And I had my other shoe with me. I'm always prepared. So I put the other shoe on. I walked around. It felt so funny. I really didn't like how I felt. This is when I really felt how much muscle I lost in my right leg. Okay. Now he didn't want to send me to physical therapy right away because I still had, you know, the, the bone was still fragile enough to mess everything up if I did something wrong. And he said, physical therapy right now, they will probably have you doing something too strenuous and I can't risk it. I want you to walk, I want you to take the time, but I can't have you going somewhere where they might try to put you on a treadmill or have you doing resistance bands in a way that are gonna you know, mess up the work that we've done. So putting that shoe on, I felt it. I just felt like jelly. I felt so flabby. My right leg, three, mo three months of no weight or pressure on your right leg is no joke so i'm still trying to get that muscle back up and work it out i'm just gonna stay consistent not worry about it even to this day so i went back july 11th and this is the day he said excuse me prior to that he said put the shoe on so for that from that time on for those two weeks before i saw him again i was alternating i was wearing a shoe for a few hours a day and then I was put my boot back on. So it's like, put the shoe on, put the boot on, put the shoe on, put the boot on. And eventually, so when I did come, because this was this was June 27th, okay? He said, I want you to start trying to wear a shoe more often. And then he took the extra cushioning out of the boot. And I was still on limited restrictions, uh, no exercise. I was still using the bone healing system. I was still using that. And so by the time July 11th rolled around, I was released from foot restrictions. He said, you can continue to use the bone healing system for at least another month, but you still can't run. You can't do high interval training. You can't jump. You can't do any of that. And then I, my next appointment was supposed to be two months from that date. And then he said, no more boot. And that was like the most beautiful thing I heard in the world. So I've only been walking without the boot for a little while now. And I'm getting better. I'm getting better. It's not as bad as it was initially. But you know, it's a journey. It's a process. I'm going to give you guys a six month update about how I'm doing. But you know, it was a journey. It was no easy task. It was what it still is. It's very trying. You've got to be focused. But I would definitely say don't give up. I would definitely say the moral of the story is work jobs that don't compromise your health. Don't mistake youth for immortality. You know, we are only human at the end of the day. I think I'm storm on some scale, but, I, you know, we're only human. We're going to take so much. Don't do things that hurt your body. Take care of yourselves. Stay hydrated. Stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Exercise. You know? Just... Do whatever it takes to make you happy. It's about you at the end of the day.
And I mean mentally too, it's about you. Stay positive, stay focused. So if you're getting this surgery, research, prepare, stay calm. You're going to have plenty of time on your hands. Catch up on all your bench watching, all your books. Be mindful that everybody heals differently. And for me, you know, I have three pins in my foot. And I do think the position of the pin in the fifth metatarsal, maybe it didn't really agree with my bone structure, you know? Because I got skinny feet. <laughs> so just know who you are, know what you want, and know what your expectations are. And just really just take your time with your healing. Don't rush it. Do not rush it. I've learned that. This definitely tried my patience. It did, but... I'm still doing my foot stretches. You know, they make you take your foot and they make you do the alphabets with them. I still do that. I'm still using my prescription foot creams that I, that I got. I'm not sure if I mentioned that to you guys earlier or not, but I do remember when the stitches came out, he ordered me some prescription creams. One was an anti-inflammatory and the other one was more so for the cosmetic part to keep the healing, the to keep it smooth and to get it back to my skin color. So I use both because sometimes, especially when it started heating up, my scar would kind of itch or burn a little bit. So I use both of those creams, still been using them. I'm gonna use them until the prescription runs out. I think that's gonna be an important thing to do. And you know, I'm just taking it easy. I'm wearing sneakers. I'm wearing house slippers again. I haven't worn a heel yet. When I, after my next appointment, I'll ask about it, but I, I don't really wear heels too much anyway. I'll definitely ask about wedges. So arch support is everything. I'm still wearing my custom orthotics. Probably gonna wear those for the rest of my life. But you gotta get those changed out too. Your orthotics are not forever. You can get them refurbished or you can get them, you know, uh, I guess updated when necessary or at least every two to three years. But I think within five years or so, depending on how active you are, you have to get your orthotics changed periodically. You have to get them redone. So I'm still wearing those on the still in sneakers. And I spend more. It's past August 11th, so I've been back to doing Zumba. I just wanted to get this, this series of videos out and try to help people out who may be going through this. Everybody's different. You know, I'm different. Nobody on the internet had a video about having all three of these done to this extent. I didn't see anything. I didn't know my journey was going to be like this. Most people just have a regular bunionectomy and that's it. And some of them can even walk in their boot a little bit. I couldn't. My surgery became really extensive and it was three months, no weight. And I'm paying for the side effects of that with my muscle atrophy. So take your time, know your body, and know that every surgery is different. Every recovery is different. But I made it through. And that's why I'm here telling y'all about it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you had surgery or if you're having surgery, if you got any questions, put them down in the comment section. I'll be sure to respond. And while we're here, go ahead and just tell us about your journey. If you've had the surgery, if you're going to have the surgery, go ahead and start the conversation. So in the meantime, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to give you a follow-up on the estrogen bone healing system and let y'all know a little bit more about that in case you're interested. And be sure to watch all of my other videos. I currently have a series going on right now called the Millennial Success Bylaws right here on Shanae's Law. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share to anybody who can find this information beneficial. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys later.